Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome back to another episode of Point and Click Puzzle Games, whereby in this video we're going to start a bit of a journey on how to develop your very own tic-tac-toe, or also known as noughts and crosses, board game as a app that you can publish. I'm going to take you on a journey all the way through all the different kind of uh, tools, features and coding skill practices that you're going to need to learn. We're going to look at the environment a lot more and we're going to get our fingers dirty as it were and basically start to build this app. Now in today's video we're actually going to look at how to launch the new project and set up and configure our environment so that we can actually start getting our hands dirty in the next video and basically building the app as it were. Now, we're gonna actually look at an example in just a moment, but if you haven't been here before, do remember that this channel is designed at teaching teenagers upwards or adults that have never coded before. So I try to use a lot of real world metaphors to explain concepts that sometimes are invisible because they are uh, logic or programming concepts that are happening in the memory of the app and you can't physically see it. So please do bear with me. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're going to dive right on over to my left hand monitor screen. If you've uh, been here before on this channel, you know that I've got like a tri monitor set up. So my front monitor is basically controlling OBS, which is recording this video at the moment for you, which is why I'm often looking to the left hand monitor, which is controlling my screen that you guys can see. So as you can see, I have launched the Solo 2D uh, console, which is over here on the left hand side. So this is kind of behind the scenes, looking inside the memory of the game, telling us and reporting on what's going on and then obviously we've got the simulator itself and as you can see I've been playing with a couple of versions so let's just take a quick look and start this journey by actually exploring the app that you will be building as we go through these series of videos now as you just saw there real quickly there was a little splash screen let me just relaunch so you can see that there's a little splash screen with the logos of my business come up just to sort of help give um, some publication to my environment as a work as a business as it were um, instantly we come straight through to the play button um, with the play button we've got player one or player two the game randomly picks using a, a random um, sort of tool and feature of solar 2d and Lua so this is being designed for us so there's no arguments so as who's go first um, players red is one and player two is blue and you literally just put your characters on the screen okay so um, what I have got here is there's a little sound effect now I am going to fix that sound effect in a later tutorial um, I thought it might be a nice example but essentially all that is happening is that my sound effect even though the sound effect is only a couple of seconds long the file itself is about five seconds so there's a little bit of a delay while it's still playing before the next counter can then play it as well so it, it literally has to finish the sound effect in full before we can uh, play the sound again there we go and player two has one so I'm just gonna click on play there and then go up to the home button uh, let's show you some other things that are going on so we've got some settings whereby here we can reset the player names uh, to the default or the scores and we can click on toggling on and off the sound effects uh, if we come over here this is where we can actually change the player's name so let's call this um, my daughter's names Lucy and Amy there we go so if my girls were wanting to play we're going to save this, take us straight back through to the gameplay. Now you can see here that Lucy's been def uh, player one, Amy is player two, and it's it was Lucy to start. So we they can play their little characters on the board, and then we'll let Lucy win. There we go. Now this little here, this little sort of uh, binoculars, allows them to just quickly see what was going on and just double check who it was that won, which is being hidden a little bit behind my play button. Okay, so then what we've got, if we come back out, we have a shopping cart. Now I'm waiting for the game at the moment as we speak to publish. 
so I do actually have to wait for it to publish so I can get the links to be able to put the links and finish this page so that's one of the things that we will tweak in the future and then over here we've got a little bit about this game so I've put the how to play the game how to learn how to code this game so I can obviously advertise my YouTube channel as well and then obviously because I'm doing everything for free I have given people the option there to buy us a coffee and again I'm waiting for the game to publish so that I can just finish off and add some of these last functionalities in but at the moment we are good to go so what we're going to do is we're going to close this game right now okay we're literally going to create a brand new project okay and once we have done this we're going to go in and uh, just tweak some other settings so that we've configured our environment the way we want it to be so I'm going to call this um, I'm going to call this tick tack so that I can differentiate it because in the UK we generally call this game Walks and Crosses but as you know it's also known as Tic Tac Toe I'm going to call it V1 so that I can keep an eye of where I'm at to I'm just going to leave all the settings exactly as they are for the moment uh, phone preset here is basically saying oh you want to design for a tablet I'm always going to leave it on a phone that's the way I like to work now I don't know why they've called it upright or sideways it means essentially that is literally portrait or landscape which is the general terminology uh, but um, I'm going to leave it in upright and we're going to change these settings in a minute anyway so just click on OK What's going to happen is uh, the the Solar 2D game engine has actually opened my uh, Windows file and folders, uh, Windows Explorer kind of uh, service here, so that we can see exactly what's going on. Now, ignore all of this on the left-hand side. So that but essentially what we've got going on up here, if you look on this PC, documents, Corona projects, we've now got tic-tac-toe version one, and it's instantly added a whole bunch of files and folders that we are going to need in order to create our game. So I'm just gonna make that a little bit small and put it down here for a minute, because we'll use that possibly from time to time um, in a moment. Now, I've also, on one of my other monitor screens, Visual Studio was prompted to open. Now I'm just going to put that on screen so you can see it. Um, let's slide this over. Uh, so Visual Studio here is instantly opened. Now obviously, uh, again, watch one of my other tutorials if you haven't been here before. I've told you how to set up Corona and the default project file folders and things like that. So what we've got here is the console, we've got the simulator, we've got our tool to code, our text editor, and it's automatically opened up to the main.lua file, which is showing down here. Let me just rearrange the screen a little bit more. Okay, so as you can see over here, um, you can see that, that it's created lots of files. We've now got the screen set up so we can see all four windows and things that we need to work with quite quickly. And then as you can see here, the main.lua file has been opened in our Visual Studio, which is the one that I've got highlighted down in the bottom here. So that's the file that we've got on screen up here. Now, um, we can drag this left and right. Um, I like to look at it with the folders so that I can jump between the different assets within this hierarchy of this game. Let me just explain um, the files actually of the folder, the game that we are building because this is the live build. Um, this is the actual files and all of the folders and hierarchies that will be designed by the time we have finished creating this game over the next series of tutorials. As you can see, there are lots of different files available and all the icons relevant are also in the main parent folder of the app. Um, we've created, we will do, which you guys haven't yet, but we've got an audio file for looking after all our sound effects. We've got fonts so that we can customize the, uh, not just use the system default that comes with the device that you're playing the, the app on. We've got icons there as well so that I've, I've stored everything that I need within the app. Um, images that are in use as well, there's loads as you can see these are my actual user interface buttons and controls um, and then obviously these folders came with the des development of the game launch or the, the app launch so we will deal with those in the future and then what we've got down here is we've got some cutscenes which is a concept and a strategy that I'm going to teach you in the future uh, as well as the first gameplay scene in this particular app I've only got one gameplay scene which is the board itself um, I use the M for main menu, so we've got menu, we've got settings, we've got players, store and about, and then down here I use T as a title screen 
oh, and, and so forth. And then we've got some overlays going on as well. So if you look, I've got a naming convention going on, which helps me to group all the different scenes or files together in a way that helps me manage my content. And it saves me having to look for things because I've named something uh, and it's all listed alphabetically. And, and to me, that's a little bit sort of uh, happy-go-lucky and I like to be a little bit more structured and organized so let's minimize the screen and just quickly jump back to our tic-tac-toe where have we gone there we go and tic-tac-toes at the bottom so this is our files now okay so let's dump jump straight on in um, to the point that what we are going to do now is we're going to need to create a scene template now as you saw all of those files that were existing what I haven't done so far in the tutorials that I've published on YouTube is talk to you guys about the uh, the Lua environment and scene templates. Now you don't have to use a scene template but I heavily endorse that you do because when you use the scene template you're using the, compro the composer library worth of tools and functionalities and it does a lot of background maintenance and admin you just don't see that's going on behind the scenes which can really really speed up the amount of code that you have to create and your mental logic as it were on designing the app and so to give you some examples of what would happen say for example every single component variable it all uses memory in the device and the devices are small, they're mobile phones, they're tablets, and at some point those devices can easily run out of available memory, which makes the apps lag and crash. So as we finish using tools and functions and assets and images and variables and things that we've created on a particular scene, as we close that scene down and navigate to the next scene as we move through our app, in the background the composer will be clearing away any data that is no longer used and freeing up device memory and if we weren't using the scene templates that the Solo 2D chaps provide and working with the structure that they have set up it means that we'd have to code that practice and it would be a lot more open for us to forget things that we need to do and tidy up so we still do an element of tidying up when we are coding but it just takes a lot of the heavy lifting out of the process for us so that is one of the reasons we are going to dive on in now and find out about our scene templates um, we're going to click on guides and then we're going to click on scenes in user interface and then what's going to happen here is we've got um, sort of the composer library which talks a little bit about understanding how the scenes work. Now I will do a scenes tutorial in a few episodes time purely because you do need to understand what happens and um, for now what we're going to do is we are literally and I do suggest you do the same is we're going to literally copy down this template code and we are just going to create a new file okay and I'm just going to call it scene template for the moment dot lua okay just so that we can paste that information in there and one of the things that I like to tell people to do when they are learning this is just to help themselves understand what's going on in the console when we're actually designing by giving themselves a little bit of help and telling ourselves what's going on on the file itself so for example we're going to put that this is uh, I'm going to put file name we will obviously change this as we start using this template but I'm just making this one tweak to the template so that it helps me when I am debugging and coding my game so in here for example I'm going to put this is create so we're in the scene create section okay then I'm going to copy right so you might be asking why I am doing this let me just save that for the moment okay when we are designing these print commands will show up in the console and I'm going to demonstrate this in just a moment for you so that we can see where this file has loaded into memory and what is still left to execute and then th when we come to trans uh, sort of navigating and transferring the scene so we move from one scene to another the scene has to close down and sometimes there is calls for one scene's commands to interfere with another scene that's loading and it helps us understand what's going on in memory which is why we've created as I showed you on my demo uh, some cut through scenes and this is a whole concept I will teach you in the future but for now I just want you to set up your scene template in the way that we have 
so that in the next tutorial we can actually start using this template and designing our game. Now the only other thing that we are going to do ready to set up our environment is um, we are just going to go back into our game. Let me just have a look. Tic-tac-toe. There we go. Select the folder. So our folder should sh ooh, show now. There we go. I just want to quickly talk to you about this config file now and we've got the build se build settings there now for the moment we're not going to touch any of the build settings um, it's not an area that we're going to get into but we do need to just quickly tweak our config now there is a scaling issue here that we've got that's called letterbox now the easiest way for me to explain this and the fact that we're going to want to call this zoom even is um, if you've ever watched Netflix on your phone and you've got these black bars that possibly go down the side of your phone where the video footage doesn't necessarily reach edge to edge on your phone. Those little black bars um, basically means that the phone is trying to display the video footage so it, it neatly fits sort of top and bottom. But because the phone possibly is a different dimension to the video footage, you end up with these little black bars that aren't actually playing any video. But then there's always that button that you can do where you can enlarge the video or go like full screen as it were, which will mean that the video footage uh, grows so that those black bars disappear. But then what you do is that you lose a very small strip at the top and a very full, small strip at the bottom on the phone for uh, the video footage that you can't then see because it's got too big. That's because obviously there are hundreds of thousands of different types of devices, tablets, computer monitors and all sorts. And it's very, very difficult for everybody to design everything and publish films and videos and everything to meet and correct all different uh, devices or display on all different types of devices. So we have this ability to control how the default settings on our app will work. Now we are gonna work with a scaling convention called Zoom Even. This is gonna be covered in a future tutorial. And we've using the um, 10, 24 by 768. Let me just go back to my left screen, 768 sort of uh, standard settings there. Uh, frames per second, which is for like uh, playing back like movies and clips, 60 frames per second. We're gonna leave all of that as it is. I'm gonna hit save. Okay, again, nothing can really see. All we can see over here in the console is that the game has reloaded. And that's pretty much where we need to be on this video today. Okay, so that kind of brings us to a closure on this. Now do stay tuned on to the second video that follows because we are literally going to start designing our app, putting our board game and some graphics and counters and things together, uh, tweaking some fonts and all sorts of other wonderful weird and things in order to launch our game. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't been here before, please do subscribe, stay notified and I'll see you on another video real soon.